Hello, good evening, boys and girls. <laughs> Another edition of the Angry Photographer. Um, you are going to see the most detailed video anywhere on the fucking internet about how to judge the purchase of a used DSLR. Um, I thought I would take a peek, see if there was actually anything out there that was decent, and a bunch of you people asked me, I thought, well, why do it if uh, there's some others out there? And amazingly, there aren't any. People are like, well, these are five tips to check a used camera. Fuck! That's not good enough. I've had thousands of cameras through my hands over the years. Mostly working in the photography store, obviously. But uh, both of the stores. And also in film school where you got uh, free use of... Uh, uh, of uh, cameras and uh, medium formats and uh, he's always checking gear and he used to buy and sell gear so you're gonna get a real uh, a real fucking way to check out a used DSLR it's gonna be 500 percent better than any fucking other video that's out there so this will be the best YouTube video on checking a used DSLR in no particular order obviously check your battery compartment for corrosion check on your terminals make sure they're not bent in there check for any corrosion on the chromium plating of the top cover check to make sure that uh, your battery cover uh, does not have any issues where it wants to actually fly open typically these latches will break if they're abused check your tripod mount check the base to see how much abuse there's been check your corners to see if someone's been carrying it around like a flock, floppy rag doll and uh, banging it uh, into walls and whatnot. Uh, you can actually see on uh, this particular camera that uh, there is a dent right there in the corner. But uh, that's no big deal. That's mine. I didn't put it there, but I got this one cheap. Okay. Um, important thing, and you will not read this anywhere, and is really fucking important, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. You need to check your bayonet mount on your cane. It's like, well, I've heard of that one. No, you have not heard of this before, and it is fucking important, and you will not read about this in any camera magazine, okay, or in any YouTube video, and it is fucking important. You're like, oh, well, it looks normal. You know, I look at it in the bayonet. No. What happens is that uh, someone will be packing their camera, some lazy douchebag, the prior fuckwit, the prior asshole, the prior mental midget that owned your camera. And what happens is they'll have like a large lens. It doesn't have to be a large lens. They're you know, slapping around their waist and wham! It goes through a door. The lens uh, hits the doorway or whatnot. It doesn't hit the camera. What happens is it torques the bayonet mount. What you could do is you can actually look down on the bayonet mount and you'll actually see the uh, the silver ring of the bayonet mount one will actually be higher you can actually also as well what I do is I do this number and I'll actually bring a flashlight over here and I'll shine down and I'll run the light along the edge of the bayonet mount and I will look for pull marks. What happens is is that since the lens obviously is meant to the bayonet mount of your DSLR what happens is it'll yank out. I've seen this many times and it's so important to look for and nobody thinks to look for this. You want the people that actually take these cameras in and use camera shops most almost all use camera shops don't know to look for this. It will strip these screws which go deeply into the chassis of your body it's not just about replacing the bayonet ring you've actually got uh, a bent chassis and at least a ruined bayonet mount because what you'll see as you shine the light not direct light like I have right now you'll actually shine it at a deep incident angle and then you'll look at it at a steep angle and as you look around you'll actually see a warpage and it'll be warped around one of the bayonet mounting lug mounting screws there'll be a little dip and you'll actually see it in the light if that happens reject the camera what has happened is that someone has actually had a lens on the front of their camera it's taken a whack and what it's done is tug and warp the bayonet mount ring of the DSLR 
Okay, that's actually a whole lot more. People want to, you know, this lens must be defective. It's taking kind of bad pictures. You know, it's kind of fuzzy on what's your bayonet mount on your camera body has been warped because the prior f nobody knows to look for this and I shit you not out there right now there are countless thousands with warped bayonet uh, chassis uh, rings uh, on their bodies that they have not inspected and it's out for sale and someone goes well you know it's the camera store they've inspected it for no they didn't expect for inspect for that I assure you they didn't that is actually very important you need to check for that okay now on uh, your DSLR, some of the uh, the better ones, obviously check your contacts in the bottom here. Make sure that they're uh, not broken. Actually, if you're in a camera store, ask to borrow a vertical grip and screw it in to see if your contacts work properly. If they give you a problem, say, fuck you, you know, I'm buying this camera. Give me a lens and give me a vertical grip to test on it. Make sure the threads are not stripped. Okay, and your tripod mount, that's actually quite common. Take a look for general abuse on the bottom. Another thing you need to look for, too, is on uh, your rubber attachments on the camera here and around here. Now, after an, an enormous amount of heavy use or someone's got real sweaty palms, you know, eventually these will lift up here. And it's kind of normal after uh, an enormous amount of use for these to actually peel up. But... If the shutter count is low and any of the rubber is peeled up, reject the camera. What has happened is someone's left it out in a hot car, left it in some hot place, and uh, the glue that actually holds these rubber patches on has uh, come undone and the camera has undergone abuse. Look for crud under your rocker dial here. Rock the rocker dial on the back of your Nikon DSLR. Look for serious oil and hand crud. It just looks like caked up lotion. That's a general sign of abuse. Check all your buttons. Turn your camera on. Check the bulb setting. Obviously, if I put the battery back in, that would have been a wise idea, huh? That would have been an intelligent decision on my part. Um, take your ear up to your command dial if you have like a D7100 or a D7000 put your ear up next to it and listen for grit as you rock it that'll indicate whether it's been near the beach um, many times you'll actually hear gritty sound going on going on underneath the dial so listen for grit if you got that issue you got a problem Check your sensor. Don't even have to have a lens on your camera to check your sensor, all right? All you need is a white sheet of paper. Throw it in manual mode. Obviously, take your body cap off. Okay? Let's throw it into manual. Use a white screen of a monitor or a sheet of paper. It doesn't have to be in focus. Obviously, there's no lens. Just point it at the white sheet of paper. Take the picture. Okay? Check your picture. Zoom in. Scroll around, look for dust and crud, okay? Check your sensor. You don't actually necessarily have to lock your sensor up. Look in your light box of your camera. If you see any fingerprints on the reflex mirror, reject the camera. If you see more than, you know, 15 or so specks of dust, especially behind the mirror, do a mirror lockup. If you see that, reject the camera. Um, if you want to inspect the sensor, that's fine, but you don't have to do that. You've already checked that with a white sheet of paper or against a monitor. Check for serious scratches on the bayonet mount of your DSLR. Put a lens on, an old screw drive D lens. Here it is right here. It kind of looks like a Phillips blade uh, protrusion um, from your DSLR. Stick a screw bladed old D lens autofocus D lens on your camera on the, the used one you're considering a buying okay click autofocus stick your ear up next to it and listen for any grinding noise if there's any noise at all other than coming out of the lens you hear grinding or any slippage reject it 
This is going to sound stupid, but it's important. Do a smell test on your lens. Now, tar is almost uh, like a awful oil spot. Tar and cigarettes stains like a motherfucker. And uh, yes, you should do a smell test on your DSLR. Get it up close to your nose. Sniff around for cigarette smoke. If you can smell, you know, uh, cigarette, cigar smoke, reject the fucking camera. God knows that there's probably a film of it on your uh, on the, uh, the on the sensor. Don't want it. Don't need it. Reject it. Important thing: look for any corrosion in your hot shoe. Any. Pop up your flash. I won't do it without my lens on. Pop up your flash. Check for dust and crud underneath your pop-up flash. Check your flash. Look for corrosion. Um, oh, an important thing, uh, I was trying to go by memory, I should have actually written this down. Uh, another thing, now these are two SD cards. Now if you got a uh, FX body, you need to have one, um, depends on which uh, FX camera it is, or uh, take out your compact flash card. Look in. This is something nobody does, and it's so fucking important. Take out your compact flash card and look in there with the flashlight. And if you see any fucking bent fent pin, this is really common, and nobody checks for it. Once it gets the camera, they're fucked. Look for any bent compact. These are SD cards, so if this were uh, like a D700 or a D810, you look in there and you see all those little pins sticking up. If you see any of them that are bent and people easily fuck that up because compact flash bays uh, the actual mail slot deep inside you know that's an expensive repair if you see them bent at all reject the fucking camera okay reject it take a laptop with you that has photoshop on it don't trust the camera store or the person because they're lying motherfuckers every one of them check your shutter count Depending on the cost you get, you know, anything up to, if you get a great cost, I don't even mind buying a used DSLR, it's got a hundred to a thousand actuations on the shutter. You know, most of them are rated for a quarter million or better, it doesn't make any difference, it's not that expensive of a replacement. You can get the camera in a great shape. Preferably, you know, I'd want to stick with something fifty, sixty thousand or less, and then cost is a consideration. Okay, so take your laptop with you. Watch my video on how to check your shutter count. You don't have to necessarily upload it to those stupid websites. Just bring it up in Photoshop. Check the shutter count on the camera. Mount a flash. Ask to borrow one or bring one and bring a lens. Check to make sure your flash fires properly. Um, the actual hot shoe connections are not fragile, but they are prone to getting a smack and breaking and not actuating uh, your speed light properly. So take a flash check it. Like I said, check your corners for dents, like you can actually see a dent in the corner here on this one. As I said, check your bayonet, uh, check your uh, battery compartment, check for the cruds underneath the buttons, check all your buttons. Listen for dial grit. Check the light box for fuzz or excess dust. Check the mirror for fingerprints. Do a white sheet check. You don't actually necessarily need to raise the shutter open the shutter and raise your mirror and take a look with a flashlight at the sensor in the back all you have to do is stick it in manual mode okay take a picture of a white sheet or a white screen on an LC on your uh, on a monitor nearby and then zoom in and look for spots okay I just got done showing you that if you taken that don't want it very white you want it about this level of gray, zoom in, look around. I'm looking for fuzz and dust and crud on the sensor. Got an issue, someone's been abusing it. Don't buy it. Can the sensor be cleaned? Fine, if you could talk them down a bunch of money. And of course you know you can clean the sensor, it's easy to do. It's not hard to do at all. Paying someone's only a few bucks if you're afraid to do it yourself. Okay. Check the bottom of the camera and all around it physically. Not that it's necessarily that super important, but if it's been treated like a redheaded stepchild and abused, 
you can probably get a good idea of how it's been treated in general. Let's go down the list really quick again, okay? Check your battery compartment, check your bayonet mount, especially that little trick I showed you to make sure it hasn't been yanked out and torqued. Check the bottom contacts of your grip to make sure that they're not screwed up, okay? That's important. These are easy to break. They're rather fragile. Try to borrow a grip if you don't have one to make sure they're working properly. Check your dials and your rocker button for grit and fuzz and excess finger crud and oils. Check the mirror for fingerprints. Check the sensor with a white sheet or on a white monitor screen. Check scratches on the bayonet mount. Check your flash. Check the bottom to see it's been treated bad. Check your corners for dents. It's typically the case that some douchebag has had their camera flopping around and has been banging in the doorways and God knows what else. Check your shutter count. Take your laptop with you. Don't trust any asshole about what the shutter count of the camera is. Usually they don't know or they're going to lie to you. Check your hot shoe for corrosion. Okay. Smell the camera. Yes, smell the roses. Smell for smoke. If you smell smoke or wet moldy smell like someone's had it stashed in the basement for you, don't buy it. Important. If your camera has compact flash bays, check to make sure if any of those pins are bent. If they are, fuck it. Reject it immediately, no matter how good the price. Check for rubber coming off on the camera. Okay, if it doesn't have any shutter counts and the rubber is already peeling, it means someone's been storing it in a hot car or God knows what hot place. And the camera has probably been exposed to humidity fluctuations, which probably means there's internal corrosion and there, uh, you know, that is a quick, fast way to the destruction of your camera. How a camera can look really good on the outside and yet inside be corroding and uh, not have a very long life ahead of it. Okay. Check the screwdriver. Stick a lens on there with a the screwdriver, an old D, D lens. If you don't know what a screwdriver is, Google it, okay? Autofocus it with your ear up close to it. Listen for any grinding noise. Check your viewfinder. You can check how bad it is, like on this viewfinder on the D7100. Pops right off. Check for crud back here. You can generally see how someone has taken care of it. You can see it's perfectly clean here on this one, obviously. This is the most extensive test and check of a DSLR anywhere on the internet or on YouTube. And uh, this is the video. So I'm glad I made it. A lot of you people have been requesting it. I was going to do it anyway. So here it is. If you can check all of that and the price is right, you got it. I can't even believe there are like four and five point tests of it, and that's bullshit. You know, my list is 21 points long. You need to check all of those 21 points that I laid out for you. All of them. Especially the one you'll never read about, of a torqued bayonet mount. Because that happens all the time. People have their cameras flopping around, there's a lens in front of it, the lens takes a big whack. Boom! What the fuck is your lens mounted to, goddammit? It's mounted to your camera. When your lens takes a whack, it torques that bayonet mount on your camera will strip a thread out it will twist the ring mounted to the chassis of your camera that will change the focal plane of any lens you stick on there and it'll fuck your pictures up and people never know to look for this they don't know to look for it even camera stores like oh you know I've looked it over it's like a good camera and then they resell it, and you know, the next person gets screwed. The only person that probably knew about it was the original owner who didn't say a thing. And when he's trying to sell it, he's like, Oh my god, I hope they didn't notice that. Oh my god, I hope they don't notice that. Oh my god, I hope they didn't notice that. Oh my god, I hope they didn't notice that. Okay. Do a thorough check. If you follow this checklist that I've laid out, you're safe and good to go. And I can honestly say that this is the most thorough video on YouTube or anywhere on the net for checking a used DSLR bar fucking none. If you like this video, you can send me a buck or two, or you can tell me to go screw myself, whatever makes you happy. Um, but I'm so glad to finally bring a thorough um, checkpoint list on buying a used DSLR. If you follow my point by point checklist, you'll be fine. That means you can go home, 
If you buy it off of some schmuck off Craigslist, since you know you're never going to get your money back. You've done all my checklists, boom, 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 you'll know you'll be okay. Of course, anything can break at any point in time, but if you follow my checklist, you're good to go. So, that's the thorough checklist for buying a USDSLR. This is another video from the crazy, angry photographer. And I'm glad I could help you, because nobody likes getting fucked with a fucked camera. Okay? Let me know if you like it. Okay, um, send me some comments, uh, you can send me a buck, or you can tell me to go screw myself, and I'm glad I could help you, because buying a used DSLR, you know, it's kind of like buying a used car, it's like, I don't know, everything to check for, well, now you do. For the first time ever, there is a complete thorough checklist of what to check on buying a used DSLR. Remember to list for grit in your dials, too. Smell test, listen test. Listen for grinding, listen for grit, look for corrosion or abuse. If you've got corrosion appearing here on your stainless hot shoe, then I can tell you there's a fuckload of corrosion going on inside. Reject it. Screen scratches, no big deal. You know, this screen has got a few scratches. You know, no big deal. It doesn't mean it's taken a whack. It just means it didn't have a screen protector on it. You know, so fucking what? big deal you know just cosmetic scratches you know that's just uh, lipstick on the pig who cares if everything else checks out you know that irrelevant shit doesn't really matter however collectively if there's a lot then that tells you someone has not been treating it very well you know as typically lazy fucking Americans are so thanks so much and I'm glad I could help you and hopefully that'll save you money in time, and you'll never have to worry about buying and using a DSLR body again because you've got this video, you've seen it, and now you know what to look for. Thanks. Catch you later.